Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So, welcome to semester 1. And in today's video, we're going to look into chapter 1, which is matter. So, in chapter 1, there are going to be three subtopics altogether, which is 1.1, atoms and molecule, 1.2, more concept, and 1.3, stoichiometry. So, in the subtopic of 1.1, we're going to look into part 1 first, at least for this video. So, in this video, you're going to look and describe the properties of proton, electrons, and neutrons in terms of its relative mass as well as the relative charge. Next, we're also going to look into the proton number, which is Z, as well as the nuclear number, and we're also going to include the writing of isotope notation. And this is going to be described as A, Z, and X here, where X here refers to a chemical symbol. Next, for learning outcome D, we're going to define the relative atomic masses, which is AR, and relative molecular mass, MR, based on the carbon-12 scale. So we're going to deal with a learning outcome A to D in part 1 of the video. For the next learning outcome, which is E, we're going to deal with that in part 2 of the video, which is in the next video. So stay tuned. So without any further ado, let us start in part 1 of the video first. So what's matter? So matter are basically anything that has mass and occupy space. So it can be uh, the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, the animal that we pet, or even the trees that surround us. And matter can exist in, in three states, namely solid, liquid, and gases. In this chapter, we're going to focus more on the microscopic level. So we need to see uh, the particle that constitutes the matter. So there are three main types of particle, which is atoms, molecules, and ions. So atoms are the most simplest uh, unit of an element. Okay, for example, fluorine atom. Meanwhile, for the molecule, it basically describes of how atoms bonded together. For example, chlorine and chlorine atom bonded together to form chlorine molecule, Cl2. Next, we're going to look into ions. So ions are basically atoms that lose electrons or receive electrons. So, atoms that lose electron are going to be positively charged, or known as cation. For example, sodium plus. So, sodium atom is going to lose one electron in order to form Na plus so that it achieves octet electronic configuration. So, uh, the, another example of atom that receive electrons are basically anion. For example, chloride ion, Cl minus. So the chlorine atom receives one electron, so it becomes Cl minus, so that it also achieves octet electronic configuration. Okay, so that's a brief explanation of what atoms, molecules, and ions are. So now we're going to focus on atoms. So atoms, as mentioned, is the smallest unit of an element. And inside the atom, there are going to be further three subatomic particles. So they are protons, neutrons, as well as electrons. So proton and neutrons are basically packaged in a small nucleus in the center of an atom. Meanwhile, electron, which have a very small mass, which is 9.1 times 10 to the power of negative 28 gram, going to be moving rapidly around the nucleus of an atom, and this is defined by a boundary known as a shell. Okay, and this explanation is based on the classical model. Later, you are also going to learn about the modern quantum model in which electrons are going to move around in the orbital of an atom. Okay, so you, you're going to learn more about this in the next chapter. Next, uh, we're going to look into the definition of proton number as well as the nuclear number. So for proton number, uh, it basically means that the total number of proton in the nucleus of an atom and it's, it is also known as the atomic number. For nuclear number, it basically refers to the total number of protons, Z, and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. So the nuclear number can be written in the formula of A equal to Z plus N. And because nucleon refers to the total mass of an atom, it is also known as the mass number. Okay, so since you understand proton number Z and nuclear number, uh, you are now able to write the isotopes notation where we can write it, write it in terms of A, Z, and X. Okay, so A refers to the nuclear number, Z refers to the proton number, 
and X refers to a chemical symbol. For example, magnesium. Magnesium has 12 proton and it's going to have 24 nuclear number or the mass number. Okay, so now let us learn more about isotopes. So, the isotopes. Isotopes are basically atoms of the same element, the state element yang sama, with the same number of proton but different number of neutrons or different nuclear number. Okay, so as what you can see here, the hydrogen, hydrogen here and hydrogen here. So, this hydrogen will have the same number of proton, 1, 1 and 1. But they are differs in the nuclear number or the neutron number. Okay, so as what you can see here, the hydrogen will have one proton, one proton, one proton. So the yellow color here refers to a proton. Okay, but there is no hydrogen here. So N, but there's no neutron in the hydrogen here. So number of nitrogen and the number of neutron gonna be zero. The number of neutron in deuterium gonna have one. Okay. And the tritium going to have two uh, neutron here. So they are isotopes to each other because they have the same number of proton but different number of neutron. Okay, so they are isotopes. Okay, since isotopes have the same number of electron, which is one in each case, okay, they have the same chemical properties but different physical properties. So physical properties example here gonna be like boiling point for example, and the chemical properties gonna be something like reactivity. Okay, and the isotopes is not limited just for a smaller weight atoms. It can also involve a very heavy molecule for a very heavy atom. For example, uranium. Okay, so uranium here is isotopes to each other because they have the same number of proton but different number of neutron. All different nuclear number. Okay, so now let us look into the exercise here. So now we need to uh, identify proton, neutron, electron, and also the charge for each of the following symbol. So proton refers to Z, neutrons refers to N. So for the symbol of hydrogen term or known as mercury, the proton number here gonna refers to 80. For neutron, it basically uh, we can find neutron by using a formula of A equal to Z plus N. So the nuclear number here refers to 200. Our Z here is 80. And we need to find our N. So N is equal to 200 minus 80. So we're going to get 120. Okay. And this is similar to the isotopes notation that we have learned. Okay. And... Now we need to find the electrons. So the electrons are basically the same as proton in the neutral state. As what you can see here, there's no charges here. So it means that the symbol here is neutral. So bila dalam keadaan neutral, the number of proton is the same as the number of electron. So it's going to be 80 as well. And they have no charge. So it's going to be 0. Now we're going to do copper. So the proton number of copper is going to become 29. The number of neutron are basically 63 minus 29. Okay, or you can use A equal to Z plus N, the same thing. So 63 here, Z is 29 plus N. So 63 minus 29, okay? Or you can simply deduct it straight away. So 63 minus 29 gonna become 34. And the electrons is basically the same as the proton because it is neutron. There's there's no charge here. So you're gonna become 29. And the charge here is going to be zero. Now, we're going to look into the oxide ion. Okay, so for the oxide ion, the proton number of the oxide is going to become 8. And then for neutron, it's basically 17 minus 8. So we're going to get 9. Now, we're going to look uh, for electron. So in a neutral state, the number of proton and electron should be the same, which is 8. However, the oxide ion have a 2 minus charge here. So the charge of 2 minus means that the atom receive additional 2 electron. The menerima 2 electron. So it's going to become plus 2. So the total number of electron that they have is 
10 electron. And then the charge here is going to become 2 minus. Next, we're going to do the cobalt 3 plus. So the number of proton in cobalt 3 plus is 27. Okay, and the number of neutron is 59 minus 27, which is 32. And for the electron, uh, in the neutron state, the number of proton and electron should be the same, which is 27. However, they got the charge of 3 plus. Means that it donates 3 electron. Maksudnya, dia derma 3 electron. So 27 minus 3. So we're going to get 24 electrons. And the charge of the species here is become 3 plus. Okay, so these are the examples of finding proton, neutrons, electrons, as well as the charges. Okay, now we're going to move on to the next part, which is the relative atomic mass, AR. So the relative atomic mass are basically the average mass of one atom. Okay, nama pun atomic mass. Okay, and the relative here means it is compared to 1 over 12 of the mass of carbon-12. So here is the formula where the mass of one atom of an element is usually denoted in the unit of AMU, which refers to the atomic mass unit, A, A, M, U, or sometimes simplified as unit only, U. Okay, so since the mass of one atom is being compared with 1 over 12 of the mass of one atom of carbon-12, so the AMU here and AMU here can be cancelled out and at the end, the relative atomic mass has no unit. Jadi, bila sebut je pakai relative, it does not carry any unit. Okay, to understand more about this, let us look into the example here. So for example one, we need to determine the relative atomic mass of an element Y if the ratio of the atomic mass of Y to carbon-12 is 0.45. So, we need to find the relative atomic mass. Okay, so the relative atomic mass, as what we have learned, equal to AR, is equal to mass of one atom of element, in this case, element Y, divided by 1 over 12 times the mass of one atom of 12 carbon, which is in the unit of AMU as well. So now, we need to find the mass of one atom of element Y first. Okay, and this can be gotten by finding the keyword here. So the ratio of the atomic mass of Y to carbon-12 atom is 0 0.45. Okay, so if you put that into mathematical way, ratio of atom Y, one atom Y, to carbon-12, one carbon-12 atom, the ratio going to be 0 0.45. Okay, so this is the ratio. Sorry, 0 0.45. Okay, so you can put it nicely here. So mass of one atom Y, ratio to mass of one atom of carbon-12 is equal to 0 0.45 divided by 1. Okay, so uh, mass of one at you can find the mass of one atom Y by bringing the mass of one carbon-12 to the other side. And you know that the mass of one atom carbon-12 is equal to 12 AMU. Okay, so you're going to plug in the value of 12 amu here and then in order to find one atom of y you're going to bring 12 amu on the uh, right hand side so 0 0.45 times 12 amu and then what you're going to get is 5.4 amu okay so now you already find the mass of one atom of y which is 5.4 amu but the question asks for the relative atomic mass so the relative atomic mass is basically the mass of one atom Y, which is 5.4 AMU, compared to 1 over 12 of the carbon-12, which is 12 AMU. Okay, so this refers to 1 over 12 times 12 AMU, basically the same as 1 AMU. So AMU and AMU can be cancelled out, and 5.4 divided by 1 basically refers to 5.4. And as what you will expect, the relative atomic mass has no unit. Okay, bila sebab relative, tiada unit. And that is why we need to do the comparison. For the mass, they're going to have the unit here. Okay, now 
we're going to look into relative molecular mass. Okay, so basically it's the same thing where the molar, the, the relative molecular mass of the molecule is the average mass of the molecule. Tadi atom, sekarang molecule, when compared to 1 over 12 of the mass of one atom of carbon 12. So similar formula, mass of one molecule compared to 1 over 12 of the mass of one atom of 12 carbon here. So AMU and AMU can be cancelled out and therefore they're going to have no unit because we are talking about relative. Okay, And the relative molecular mass is basically the summation of the relative atomic masses. They are campuran setiap atomic. Pasal setiap molecule consists of different atoms. For example, NH3 here, they have the masses of one atom of nitrogen and three atom of hydrogen. Okay, to understand more about this, let us look into the example. So, for example, too, we need to calculate the relative molecular mass of C5H5N given that the atomic mass of the carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen to be as below. So, in order to, for us to find the relative molecular mass, we need to use the formula as shown in the previous slide, which is um, mass of one molecule of C5H5N. And when we are talking about relative, it needs to be compared with 1 over 12 times the mass of one atom of carbon 12. Okay, so now we need to find the mass of one molecule first. Okay, and in order to do that, um, we need to find the mass of the C5H5N molecule where we need to add the, the atomic mass of carbon with the atomic mass of hydrogen and the atomic mass of nitrogen. Okay, since the molecule has C5H5N, so 5, carb five carbon plus 5 hydrogen and 1 nitrogen. Okay, and the atomic mass of carbon is 12.01. So, atomic mass, I put it as AM here. Okay, so 5 times 12.01 plus 5 times 1.01 and 1 times 14.01. Okay, so when I add up together, I'm going to get 79.11 U. Okay, so U here refers to unit. Okay, now we already find the mass of one molecule, which is 79.11. However, the question asks us to find the relative molecular mass. So we need to do the comparison. So... We're going to um, compare 79.11U compared with 1 over 12 of the carbon 12. So 1 over 12 times 12 unit, it basically refers to 1 unit. So U and U can be cancelled out and 79.11 divided by 1 is basically refers to 79.11. Okay, and as what you can see, relative has no unit. For the mass of C5HN H5N, they're gonna have unit here. Okay, so I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!